Welcome, families, to Storytime at the Harvard Museums of Science and Culture. If you've attended our program before, welcome back. If this is your first time, we're glad you're here. We hope this program engages everyone in your family, from the little kids to the grown-ups. We read picture books that you might find at your local library or at school that connect to something in the museums. First, we'll read the story, then look closely at some objects from the museums. We hope you enjoy today's story. Hello, welcome to Storytime. I'm so glad you're here today. My name is Carol. Do you have a dog at home? Yeah? That's great. How big is it? Is it pretty small or is it very large or something in between? And what's your dog's name? Well, what do dogs really like to do? Uh, yeah, they like to play fetch. Some dogs love to swim. And I think all dogs like to run. Do you like to run? Yeah, why do people run? Right, for fun, to get somewhere faster than walking, and because it's a natural thing for us to do. Well, today's story is The Dog Who Cried Wolf, and it's written and illustrated by Keiko Kaza and published by G.P. Putnam's Sons in 2005. Today we're reading it with permissions from Penguin Random House. So let's look at the picture on the cover. What do you see? Yeah, it's a dog howling at the moon. How do we know it's a dog and not a wolf? Well, it's wearing a bandana, and so a person must have tied it on the dog. This is what wolves look like when they're howling. So what is the scientific difference between wolves and dogs? Well, genomic studies suggest gray wolves and dogs diverged from an extinct wolf species 15,000 to 40,000 years ago. So wolves and dogs are very close relatives. They're both in the canid family. And if we look at their scientific names, we see that gray wolves are called Canis lupus, and dogs are a domesticated species called Canis lupus familiaris. Wolves are wild, and dogs are domesticated. There are over 200 breeds of dogs, and they're all the same species. Isn't that amazing? So the physical changes that appeared in dogs over time as they became domesticated, including splotchy coats and curly tails and floppy ears, just like we see in this picture. They follow a pattern of process known as self-domestication. It's what happens when the friendliest animals of a species somehow gain an advantage. Friendliness somehow drives these physical changes which can begin to appear as visible byproducts of the selection in only a few generations. So let's see what happens with the dog in our story who cried wolf. Mocha was a good dog. There's Mocha. He and Michelle loved to be together. Michelle is his girl. Life was perfect until one day she read a book about wolves. Look, Mocha, said Michelle, you're kind of like a wolf. See, there's the book about wolves. Wow, thought Mocha, I am kind of like a wolf. Look how amazing wolves are. They run around free and they hunt wild animals and they stay up late to howl at the moon. And look at the way I live, Mocha sighed. 
I'm nothing but a house pet. Here he's on a leash and he's eating kibble out of a bowl and Michelle shushes him when he howls at the moon. He felt like a failure, especially when Michelle made him dress up for her tea parties. He wanted to be a wolf. The next day, Mocha made up his mind. He snuck out of the house and took off for the mountains. He ran and ran and ran. Until finally, he reached a high mountaintop. I'm free, he yelped, free as a wolf. So he ran. He jumped. He danced. And he peed wherever he wanted. Wow, he exclaimed, the world is mine. How do you think Mocha feels right now? Soon Mocha got hungry. No problem, he cried. I'll hunt for my food, just like the wolves do. And off he went. What do you think he's going to eat? Oh, a rabbit outran him. And a skunk, hmm, a skunk sprayed him. And a beetle, a beetle pinched him. And even a field mouse made fun of him. By nightfall, Mocha was miserable. He missed Michelle. I even miss her tea parties, he mumbled. But I can't give up yet. There is one more thing I have to do. What do you think he has to do? Let's see. He gazed at the golden moon and howled as loudly as he could. Let's all howl together, okay? It's fun. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Good job. He howled just like a wolf. Suddenly, something howled back. Oh, oh. And then, oh. Mocha froze. <gasps> wolves, he said. Real wolves. What do you think Mocha's going to do? Yep. He turned and raced down the mountain. I want to go home, he panted. I never want to be like a wolf again. And he ran and he ran and he ran. Until finally, he reached the house he knew so well. Mocha, Michelle shouted as she dashed out to meet him. I think Mocha and Michelle must feel really happy. You're back. She gives him a big hug. Mocha was home again, and he and Michelle were oh so happy. Life was just perfect until one day she read a book about monkeys. What do you think's gonna happen next? Oh, look at Michelle, <laughs> swinging from the chandelier and eating a banana. That's the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed that story. Do you think Mocha will want to be a monkey next? Probably not. We saw in the picture that Michelle was swinging from the chandelier and eating a banana. But Mocha did want to be a wolf. And one thing he wanted to do, like a wolf, was to run free. Wolves have to run a lot. They live in packs within territories that they defend from other wolves. And the territories are huge. They range in size from 50 square miles to over a thousand square miles, depending on the available prey and their seasonal movements. And therefore, wolves travel over large areas to hunt. 
sometimes as far as 30 miles a day. Wolves will travel long distances by trotting at about five miles per hour, but they can run as fast as 40 miles per hour for short distances. Wolves live in a lot of different environments, some of them very, very cold in the winter, and they've got beautiful fur that is splotchy. This is the fur from a gray wolf, but you see it's not gray. So gray wolves have a lot of different um, color pelage, and they're very able to um, be camouflaged in the woods when they need to be um, hunting for prey. It's soft. But if you think about the dogs that we have, that we have in our houses, they may have different color fur, and part of that has been the domestication process. How fast do you think that Mocha ran back home to Michelle? Do you think he ran as fast as the wolf? Well, thanks for joining me today. See you next time.